For centuries, the natives upon the island of Kambuki have worshipped the eye of the mountain. Sparkling, dazzling in a most mysterious way, the eye, according to legend, protects the Kambukian warriors who have died in battle. Every evening, just at sundown, the native Kambukians gather at the mountain, carrying torches to light their way and offer homage to the watching eye. Less than a thousand miles out from the island, the mighty Argonaut moves silently through the night. Her skipper, Captain Fathom, stands watch. Getting sleepy, Ronnie? No, sir. It's pretty hard to get sleepy when you're in charge of more than $10 million worth of hardware. <laughs> I know, kid. But don't forget why we assigned you as plainsmen. <laughs> I know, sir. Guys my age have twice the reflex action as men who have reached the age of... <laughs> okay, you've made your point. I don't agree with it, but... Hold it, sir. We've got contact with the island of Kamboki. Want me to wake up Miss Perkins? No, I'll let her sleep. What's our estimated time of arrival? Oh, that's a good question. Let's see. I would estimate our time of arrival at 0700. It should be daylight. Okay. Steady as she goes, plainsman. As the mighty Argonaut and her sleeping crew race toward Kambuki Island, little do they realize that a mysterious black yacht is about to drop anchor in the harbor. There she is, Harold. Nest egg to a thousand dreams. Would that our journey only reward us in verifying the truth of our ill-begotten map. <laughs> you are an evil genius, Master. With your peculiar talents, I could have been a king. <laughs> Get over that. We have work to do. Sorry, Master. Now then. We know the natives of Kambuki Island are superstitious fools. We must play upon this in order to rescue the Kambukian diamond. <laughs> to rescue the diamond? That is good, Master. <laughs> you are beginning to lose control again, Harold. Is it necessary to give you another treatment? I shall control myself, Master. Please. Then prepare the shore boat. Let us get on with our mission. In the morning, we must meet with the chief of the Kambukians. <laughs> At once, Master. To delay would be fatal. To delay would be fatal. Oh, whatever happened to the intelligent, loyal henchmen of the past? So the next morning, Harold and his master meet the chief of Kambuki Island. And we greet you, your eminence, as ambassadors of the sun god, who sends his greetings. Mm. One more time from top light face. You saw this hurricane and... I barely said that, not wishing to see your island washed to sea in the approaching hurricane, we stopped it. <laughs> That's right, Your Highness. We saw this mighty storm about to destroy the island, and my master here waved his hand and stopped it. <laughs> Utterly amazing! It was not an easy task, even for us, the most experienced ambassadors of the Sun God. I should think not! What you have done make a witch doctor look like an apprentice intern! An apprentice intern, Your Highness? Highness, another messenger from the Sun God must be arriving. Look! It's one of those days! As the Argonaut reaches the island of Kambuki, the master, first ambassador of the Sun God, says, Captain Father, he cannot upset my plans. I must do away with him. Quick, Harold, into the jungle. What will happen to Captain Fathom and his crew? It's before the island of Kambuki, Captain Fathom says, Okay, we're here, gang. Stand by to go ashore. At once, Skipper. Weapons? Security one, Scotty. Small package. He's kidding, of course. Does he know where we are? When the skipper says weapons security package one, I give him weapons security package one, Miss Perkins. Just the same, you don't mind if I bring my slingshot. Well, the skipper didn't say not to, but keep it hidden, lad. And I'm taking a hat pin. You never know. Welcome to Kambuki, your representative of Sun God. Well, 
we represent the United States Navy, Chief. Um, sun gods are sort of beyond our jurisdiction. A common denominator at best. Uh, say again. Never mind. Prepare for luau. Prepare for the luau? That's a feast, isn't it? They wouldn't eat us, would they? Stay on guard, Perkins. I don't like this. He's a little too friendly. Any questions, Scotty? Great day in the morning. Maybe we'd better get back to the Argo. No, not without fresh water. Do not be alarmed, my friends. We would merely like to welcome you and our other guests to the island of Kambuki. Did you say other guests? At your service, my dear Captain Fathom. Unfortunately, there is no room at the table for you and your friends. Hey, how about that? You guys gonna stay to fight for us? As the ambassadors of the Sun God, we were here first. You must give me your word, Captain Fathom, that if we give you your freedom, you will leave with no trouble. Oh, now, wait a minute. Ambassadors of the Sun God? Why, that's the biggest... Stroke of luck to hit this island since Princess Kuliha won the Seven Seas Beauty Contest. She's my daughter. We should destroy the master before they ruin everything. Shoot them, shoot them! Harold. Sorry, master. Well, Captain, what is your answer? Will you and your crew leave peacefully, or... Look, fella, I don't know what your game is, but we came here to get fresh water and supplies, and by Davy, we're going to stay until we get them. Good for you, Captain. Then let's shoot them! They won't be reasonable, so let's shoot them! <laughs> you are beginning to slip, Harold. Control yourself. But, master... Enough of this nonsense. Look, your highness. The princess! My daughter! I don't understand, Mr. Ambassador from the Sun God. Why have you captured Princess Kulihau? What does this mean? You have until sunrise tomorrow morning to deliver to me the Eye of the Mountain. If not... What? But even wholesale! That diamond is worth millions! It's the only way I can control my people. Without it, these guys would again become primitive barbarians. We all have our little problems, Chief. You have until sunrise tomorrow morning. Harold, take the girl to the ship. <laughs> A stroke of genius, Master. You leave him no choice. <laughs> the ship, Harold. Get the princess to the ship. At once, Master. My father, I am their prisoner. Hey! You're really serious about this, huh? You have until sunrise. Remember. Well, what can Captain Fathom and his crew do to help the Kambukians? Capturing the daughter of the chief, the master and his aide had returned to their yacht. Aboard, the princess says, You are out of ever-loving heads. You cannot steal Diamond. You cannot steal me, either. The answer to that will be determined before morning, my dear. Now, I suggest you retire. I shall let you know when your father comes aboard. Master, they are having a ceremony on the mountain. If I had to give up a diamond worth millions, I too should have a ceremony, Harold. <laughs> and on the island, the Kambukians are indeed having a ceremony. A feast to honor their guest. This is great. Boy, what a feast. I hope so. If these Cambodians find out that their chief intends to steal the diamond and give it to those thieves, well... That'd be another feast. And guess who'll be the main chorus? I just wonder what Captain Fathom's up to. He didn't let me in on it. Me either. The skipper just said to enjoy ourselves and he'd be back later. And back aboard the Argonaut, Captain Fathom says to the chief, I just can't understand you, chief. You speak as though you understood today's world and, and yet to worship a diamond and think these thieves ambassadors of a sun god. Well, during Second World War, a group of GI shipwrecked and landed on Kambuki. We thought they were missionaries. So? So, we learned their language. They help us avoid those that would conquer our island. What a riot that was. Mm, I see. Well, hook up your scuba suit and see if we can't pay a little surprise visit to our friends aboard the yacht out there. After you, Captain. As Captain Fathom and the chief of the Kambukians swim toward the master's yacht, little do they realize what's in store for them. 
You were right, Master. Here they come. It's Fadam and the Kabuki and Chi. And now's the time, Harold. Drop the raw liver overboard. I don't understand, Master. Why do we waste liver? Drop the liver, Harold. Yeah, but this could be our supper, aye? Get ready for a treatment, Harold. You're beginning to wander again. Look, Master. It is done. Excellent, my boy. You see, the raw liver will attract a few sharks. But, Master... And next to raw liver, sharks love raw human beings, Harold. Now do you understand, my lad? How clever you are, Master. <laughs> you can stop that any time now, Harold. Sorry, Master. Now watch the fun and behave yourself. Stop trying to aggravate me. The raw liver does indeed attract several large and ferocious sharks. As they swim up to the food, they suddenly notice two dark figures slowly swimming toward the yacht above. Sharks ignore the liver and prepare to attack Captain Fathom and the chief of the Kamukians. They've spotted them, Harold. Look. How wonderfully gruesome, Master. They'll be eaten alive. Great Caesar's ghosts. Sharks. I take the fish on the left, Captain. You handle the one on the right. And for all, the Master has thrown raw liver overboard to attract the sharks to Captain Fathom and his friend. They watch in horror as the sharks get ever closer. Here we go, Captain. Wait, Chief. I've got a better idea. <laughs> watch this. When the bright light hits the two sharks, they become frightened. I see it, but I don't believe it. Master, look! They've escaped the sharks! They're inhuman! Quiet, you fool. I'm prepared for this. You'll both put your hands above your heads. We have you covered. I suggest you surrender. And might I suggest that you drop those insignificant weapons before I find it necessary to destroy you both. Lights, please. Good. Now what, my dear Captain? What shall we do, Captain? We have the guns. We can... Hold it, Chief. Look, up there on the bridge. Holy cats. They got my daughter and a machine gun. These babies mean business. I guess we do what he says. Right. Okay, you win this round. Now what? <laughs> Both of you return to the island and get that diamond. Oh, and Captain. Yeah? If you're thinking you will return to the Argonaut, please do not be so foolish. If you do, we shall be forced to cannonade your submarine to the bottom of the briny. I get the message. Come on, Chief. If you harm my daughter, I shall... Return with the diamond and she will be freed, Your Highness. But if you should fail... Don't worry. We'll be back. With the diamond. With the diamond, you... Come on, Chief. Back to the island. Meanwhile, back on the island of Kambuki, Scotty says... There they are. And they don't have the princess with them either. What happened? Couldn't you find her? He's tricky, gang. He had a couple of extra friends. They surprised us. Sharks with teeth this big! Now what do we do, Captain? Well, they hold all the right cards for the moment. We don't dare try to surprise them again. Not being able to board the Argo for weapons. Hey, we have no choice. We have to give them the diamond. My daughter's life is at stake. Well, maybe once they've got the diamond, they'll put to sea. If they don't wreck the Argo, we'll be able to catch up to them. And blast them right out of the ocean, eh, Skipper? Follow me. But make sure none of my people see us, Captain. There's no telling what they would do if they knew I was about to give away the eye of the mountain. Scotty, you, Perkins, and Ronnie go back to the luau. It'd look pretty suspicious if we all disappeared at once. We get you, Skipper. Sorry. Without our arsenal, my hands are tied. I know, Scotty. Maybe later. Good luck, Captain. As Captain Fathom and his friends slowly make their way to the top of the mountain, Back aboard the master's yacht, Harold says... And she was trying to dive overboard when I caught her, master. Shall I destroy her? 
<laughs> you must get over that, Harold. I shall not tell you again. Sorry, Master. You cannot hold me prisoner. My father will shrink heads for this. Ah, a splendid idea. And if you wish to keep your head, my dear, I should suggest you not try to escape again. My patience runs thin. <laughs> if she tries to escape, she will lose her head. <laughs> I told you about that, Harold. Now look at this. No, no, Master. Not that. Look, Harold. What do you see? Who is it, Harold? Who is it, Harold? I... Kulihau does not understand. Harold cannot look at his own face. It drives him literally batty. It's my only control over him. Without this mirror, there's no telling what he'd do to me. <coughs> Ambassador of Sun God, very strange. <coughs> Harold! Harold! Come back, boy! Come back, boy! <coughs> are enjoying a feast with the Kambukian natives, Captain Fathom and the chief make their way to the top of the mountain, where the chief says, There it is, Captain. The eye of the mountain. Mysterious protector of all Kambukians. Man, that is some eye. Just look at the size of that diamond. It grieves me to do this to my people. But give me a hand. We must save my daughter. Can I be of help? I'm sorry, Captain. But I just had to follow. Well, then take one of the torches and lead us back down the mountain, huh? Yes, Captain. I... What the... Huh? What is it, Liz? Why, that diamond, it's a phony. It's made of glass. Glass? That's impossible! No, Miss Perkins would know, Chief. She's an authority on precious stones. It's glass, all right. There's no doubt about it. And that ambassador of a sun god would know it! My poor daughter is doomed! No, maybe not, Chief. Look at this. So? You hold a piece of rock. Not just a rock. This is lava rock. I don't understand. Well, this mountain was apparently once a volcano. Yeah, I think my idea will work. You're going to blow the whole island to bits, right? Hardly, Miss Perkins. Now, here's what I want you to do. I am truly sorry you feel that way, Harold. But... If you would just learn to control yourself, there would be no need to frighten you with the mirror. <laughs> I should try, Master, but, but that awful reflection, I can't stand it. It's horrible. Look, Harold, they are signaling us from shore. Hey there, you're on the black yacht. We've been sent to warn you. We've all got to leave this island at once. Right, that volcano's about to explode. And what manner of trick is this? Look, Master, they are right. And indeed, the volcano looks as though it's about to erupt. Quick, Harold, prepare to leave. We must not take chances. But what about the princess, Master? Throw her overboard. At once, do you hear? At once, Master. And within the volcano, Captain Fathom and the chief discuss the situation. Do you think this will work, Captain? Well, we'll find out in a few moments, Chief. Uh-oh, watch it. The oil's hit the fire. Quick, we get out of here. And back aboard the master shot. Start all engines. Set a course for Jamaica. At once, Master. The crew is ready. Hurry. The volcano is about to explode. Harold, did you get rid of the princess? She's overboard, Master. See? She reached shore already. Then head this boat to sea. We are doing our best, Master. Stop pushing me! Don't talk back to me, Harold. You monster, you. You are always wandering and shouting. Harold? And on the island. It worked, Chief. That's your daughter there, near that small palm tree. You are a genius, Captain. How can we ever repay you? Just water and a few supplies, Chief. That's all we need. But still, a few ounces of gold, maybe, or... Nope. Nope, nope, nothing. You know what you can do for me, Chief? Tell me how you're going to explain to your people about that phony diamond. Captain, look at this. What is it, Liz? I've never seen so many diamonds in my life. There are literally thousands of them. Great Scott! Are you sure? See for yourself. These are perfect blue-white diamonds. 
They're worth a king's ransom, if I'm any judge. Unbelievable. Chief, you've got the most expensive piece of real estate in the whole Pacific Ocean. A mountain full of diamonds. Truly a miracle. You must take some with you. It's the least I can do. <laughs> you won't take no for an answer, will you? Well, maybe one for Miss Perkins here, huh? Why, thank you, Captain. And later, as the mighty Argonaut again travels the sea. And when Liz discovered the diamonds, the loss of the eye didn't seem so important to the Cambodians. Great day in the morning. But won't that master fellow and his assistant be back? I thought of that, but... Well, tell him, Liz. Right. Here, Scotty. Catch. It busted. It was glass. Just like the eye of the mountain. Apparently, the base of the volcano is composed of sand and silicon. The heat, when it was active, turned the elements to glass rocks. And if that master guy returns and tells the natives their diamonds are made of glass... And the chief will then ask him to change the glass back to diamonds. And if he can't do it... Now, really, Scotty, are you implying that the ambassador of the sun god can't turn glass into diamonds? That could make the natives very restless. <laughs> <laughs> Hey kids, have we got a surprise for you in the July school holidays. Fat Cat's Carnival of Fun is coming, so save your pocket money and stay tuned.